All right, the other day I drove out to the Tool Shed of America located in, where are they, Middletown, Pennsylvania. And I ended up bringing home this Griffin GT712 dump trailer. I've been looking at dump trailers for a while and I decided to go with this one because I think it's a really good value brand dump trailer. So in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a pretty thorough initial review of this trailer. Some of the things I like about the trailer, a few things I dislike, and also reviewing a lot of the great features about this trailer. Uh, first thing I'll say, the Tool Shed of America, really great bunch of guys. I, I, the reason I went with them is because they have the lowest prices around. Um, I drove probably three hours out there and three, hour, three hours home, stopped at Cabela's on the way back, and just a really great bunch of guys, you know. They pulled the trailer into their shop, they checked the charge on the battery, put a charge on the battery. They offered to um, adjust the height of the trailer hitch if the trailer wasn't level, but it was level um, when they hooked it up to my truck. Um, they went over everything, inspected everything. They even put the license plate on the back. I didn't even have to get on my knees to do that. Really great bunch of guys um, and really great prices. So let's start talking a little bit about this trailer. Clearly it's a dump trailer. It's rated for 12,000 pounds. It has two 6,000 pound axles. The curb weight of the trailer is 3,620 pounds. So that means you can put a total weight in the back of 8,380 pounds. Of course, if your um, tow vehicle is rated to haul that. My truck is rated for 9,400 pounds, so I'm never gonna put anything um, probably above 8,000 pounds in there. So just, you know, be aware of that. Be aware of the weight of the materials you're putting in the back and just be careful. There's trailer brakes on both, both axles, which I'm really happy about that. I believe it has a KTI American-made hydraulic pump which I'm really happy that it has, a, you know, an American-made hydraulic pump. It has twin cylinders, twin cylinders for the dump body, which, I don't know, there's something about twin cylinders that I, I just like better. I like that, you know, you're supporting the weight of the bed on either side as opposed to just having one in the center. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I just like the idea of having two cylinders. It has a tarp kit. This trailer came with LED lights, which I'm really a huge fan of the tarp kit. We'll... we'll get a bit closer in a minute here and start reviewing some of these things uh, up close and in detail. Um, has the trailer ramps and also has a dual style door in the back. So it has, uh, I guess they call it the barn door where it can open kind of like a regular house door and it also has a regular dumping tailgate feature which is really awesome. It towed like a dream and I really am happy with the purchase so far. So let's get up close and let's start taking a look at some of the features this trailer has to offer. So here's a quick look at the owner's manual. This trailer is made by Chubb Steel, and they are out of Elkhart, Indiana. I just have so much to say about this trailer, I'm not really sure where to start. I guess it makes sense to start at the hitch. So the trailer includes a ball hitch, and this ball hitch is rated for 14,000 pounds, which is a 12,000 pound trailer. Something that I need to be careful with and I need to upgrade in the future is my truck hitch. This is just something you wanna keep an eye on. If you look closely here, this hitch is only rated for 6,000 pounds, and I believe the ball is only rated for maybe 7,500 pounds. So if I plan to haul anything over 6,000 pounds, I'm definitely going to need to upgrade that hitch. So that's just something to keep an eye on. It has an adjustable tongue, so if you need to adjust the height of your trailer, you have the ability to do that. You can obviously switch this out for a pintle hitch system, too, if you like, which, you know, I've kind of always been a fan of the pintle hitch, but after towing this trailer with the ball... Um, something I really like about the ball is going down the road, there's just no play in the hitch as where, you know, if you have a pintle hitch, that ring, the trailer can move around just a little bit inside that ring, but with a ball, it just stays one with the truck. So I do like having the ball hitch. You have your safety chains, which you, you can see there's a little bit of rust in. I mean, you can see this throughout the trailer, just a little bit of rust here and there. Uh, like down here, there's a little bit of rust in there. I mean, it's a dump trailer. You know, you expect it to get scratched up, but obviously, you know, you want the paint to be as nice as possible. So um, I'd imagine over time, I'm definitely going to need to keep a can of Rust-Oleum paint just to touch up all these rusty spots. But uh, tow chains, you know, they seem adequate. Breakaway kit, which is nice. Nice cord. The plug is built into the cord. I like that. I'm not exactly sure what the exact rating of this jack is. I want to say it's around 7,000 pounds. I like that it has a greaser right here and it also has a pin in the bottom so you can pull that pin out and drop this plate all the way down so you don't have to spend all day jacking this trailer. But, you know, again, looking at the hitch mounting plate there, 
you can see a little bit of rust right there and this trailer is brand new like look at that they forgot to paint or powder coat this so you know that's why i say it's a good value brand trailer because it, you know it's not perfect the paint job isn't perfect the the welds you know there's there's stuff here to nitpick here and there which obviously i'm gonna do but overall it's a good value trailer all right so let's get into this hydraulic control box first thing you'll notice there's a little hole right here i'm not really sure why there's a hole right here uh, to me that's just another spot for water to get in i like that they have a folded over edge with that which that just kind of helps water drip off the side and not go in the box they have a big hole in the back here i wish they did a better job of sealing this up and something else i don't like is they have this hydraulic hose just rubbing on this kind of sharp edge of the box right here. I would really, or well, I'm, I'm gonna have to put a piece of radiator hose or something over this because I work with hydraulics a lot at work and so commonly I see a hydraulic hose rubbing on something sharp like this and eventually the hydraulic lines fail. So that's just something to keep an eye on. I'd really like to do a better job sealing up this box. So that's not something I'm a huge fan of. It does have this really nice latch right here, and it has this little uh, cylinder which just, you know, helps take up the weight of the lid as you lift it up and bring it back down, soft close, which, you know, that's a really nice feature. I do like that this is lockable too, and they have the keys for it, which they're normally kept right on the back right here, so you can lock this and prevent anybody from stealing your nice hydraulic unit or your battery. The hydraulic unit, it is a KTI hydraulic unit, Engineered, built, and tested in the good old USA, which I'm really happy about that. I believe this trailer is power up and power down. Which I'm going to lift this up and we'll look underneath the trailer a bit later. But um, you can see right there when the trailer was all the way down, the hydraulic pump was still going. So this is a power up and power down, which I, I think I like. I think that's a nice feature. Something I dislike about this box, uh, the finish on the bottom isn't great. You see these little dots right here? Most of these are just uh, paint bubbles, so I'm not really sure what's going on there. Also, I'm not seeing any drain holes in here, so you know, clearly they have a spot where water can get in, but they haven't allowed, or they haven't drilled any holes in here to allow water to get out of here, so you know, no big deal. I'm definitely going to take a drill at some point and just drill some holes in here to allow water to get out of here and try and do a better job of sealing up that hole. Comes with an interstate battery. There's also some nice warranty information here, which I like. So the battery, get this in focus here, 12 month warranty on the battery, two year on the hydraulic pump, tires, prorated axles, five years. And they also have a line right there for troubleshooting, which, you know, that's it's nice that they included that. I like that. Something else I really like, it has a built-in battery trickle charger with a little button right here. You can actually press this button and you can see how charged up your battery is. So I actually had this thing charging and the battery is all charged up. You know, that's just something you don't have to buy in the future. I mean, how, how much does a trickle charger cost? Anywhere between, you know, 25 to 50 bucks, depending on how high the quality of trickle charger you decide to buy. I don't know what's going on with the hinge there. So again, I, I like to call this a good value trailer. Little things like this, they could have done a better job of welding this up and maybe put a higher quality hinge, but, you know, it has a lot of nice features. Just some things aren't perfect. In the front of the trailer, you'll see they have a little logo. I like that they have a spot to mount a spare tire that comes standard with the trailer. Really all the welds on the exterior or where you can see visibly on the trailer body are pretty good. Really don't have too many complaints about those welds. Really everything looks pretty good. Fenders feel nice and thick. I don't know what gauge, but might be 10 gauge. Nice diamond plate fenders. This is really one of the features I absolutely love about this trailer. It comes with this tarp. Now this tarp is an option, so if you are looking at purchasing this trailer, make sure that it specifies that it does come with the tarp kit. I love how they design this. First off, you have pillow blocks with grease fitting, so you know, if you grease this regularly, this will last a very long time. Uh, my trailer also came with this orange cord, which kind of a cheap 
dog clip, but I like that it came with this cord so when you pull it all the way back, you can just tie it off and secure it down. Um, I'm not sure if the Tool Shed of America included these uh, bungee cords with the trailer, if they come like that from the factory, but it's nice that the trailer came with that. Something else I really like about this tarp, look at the hood they built over this tarp. So if you have a sloppy operator that's loading you with mulch or something like that, that material's gonna deflect either this way into the trailer or off to the side this way, so it won't get caught up in this tarp. And also look at this pocket, how it's slanted this way, so nothing can really collect in there. I really like the engineering of this tarp. Just some warning labels underneath the tarp. Don't exceed the dump load of 8,000 pounds, just some things to check before you tow the trailer, and also wheel torque requirements, which that's nice that they have that on there. Whenever I take the tires off, I can match my torque wrench to those torque specs. When I was first looking at the trailer, I was like, what, what is this? And then it dawned on me, it's actually a step. So you can step up right here and climb into the back of your trailer. So that's, you know, that's a nice little feature there. All right, let's talk about the ramps. So the ramps on this trailer are located on the side of this trailer, which you know, it, it's a good and a bad thing, I guess. Um, it's nice that they're easy to access and you don't have to lift up the dump body to access the ramps. I know on a lot of other trailers, you have to lift up the trailer body to get to the ramps underneath the bed. God forbid if you have a dead battery, you know, then you got to run out, you got to put a trickle charger on the battery, charge the battery up before you can access the ramps. So it's nice that they're here. It's nice that they're on the side. Um... Again, if you have a sloppy dump operator, this is a great spot for dirt and mulch to collect. So, you know, I'm thinking I'm gonna take them off the trailer because I don't really plan to be uh, having equipment in here too much. Um, another thing, they're a little bit less secure here, meaning that if you live in a bad area, I don't, I don't really know who would wanna steal a couple ramps, but you know, they're, they're nice ramps. So um, if you live in a bad area, you may wanna think about putting some type of lock on here to make sure nobody jacks these. One concern I had about ramps on the side, I was worried they were going to be rattling around a lot going down the road, but honestly, towing this thing home, you know, granted it's brand new, I didn't hear these ramps rattle once. But if you look on the back of this receiver here, there's a little piece of rubber back here, and they're in here pretty tight, so really there's no room for them to really rattle around. Um, I haven't had them off the trailer yet, but I, you know, I guess the uh, the C channel here, there's probably just a, yeah, just a piece of C channel in there, which... You know, this C-channel receives into the other C-channel. Same thing up front there. Yeah, a little bit of rust there, but, you know, again, it's a dump trailer. Also, it's important that you note that the ramps are only rated for 5,000 pounds. You know, even though the capacity of the dump bed is 8,000 pounds, you don't want to exceed that 5,000 pound rating of the ramps. Also, at the beginning of the ramp and the end of the ramp, you'll find these nice pockets right here for putting some heavy duty straps on, which if you look inside the trailer, it has five D-rings. One, two, three, four, and five. Let me climb in the trailer for a second here. All right, these D-rings are bittersweet for me. I like that they kept them off the trailer floor. On my stepfather's dump trailer, he has these D-rings down on the bottom. I like that they're raised. I like that they're in here. What I hate though is the location of them. I hate that they just put them on this metal and there's nothing behind it. So if you really crank down on this thing, you're gonna be pulling this wall out. Like why couldn't they take that D-ring and put it right here behind this member? It would have been so much stronger if they could have put it right here. And again, same thing on the other side here. Like why not put it here? So if you really ever wanna strap anything serious, I'd recommend using this top strap however you can. You know, if you're strapping down an ATV or something like that with some ratchet straps, fine, but, you know, again, just on this sidewall, not behind any backing like this. Move that forward a foot, please. Again, the ones in the front corner, I mean, there's really not too much that you can really put it on. At this point, I'd almost rather than be on the floor on a joist just something really strong on the bottom where you can really crank on it like where it is right now again you know you can't really crank on it too much if you really ever got to crank anything down i recommend going to these they do have one done the proper way the one in the center here the front one they have this right behind this member for the uh 
the spare tire mount, but I like that they put that D-ring right along that member. So, so that D-ring, I'd feel good about cranking some weight down on that. While we're in here, I'll say the construction of the bed, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. This metal is 10 gauge metal. And looking at this, the sides of this are all one piece up into the center. So this is one piece folded here, folded here. This isn't welded, this is still one piece that is folded here and it's just welded right down the center. So I really like the construction of that and it's just one piece going all the way down. There's no seam, nothing like that. So I really like that. A little bit of rust forming right here, but I mean, come on, it's a dump trailer. I'm gonna throw sticks and rocks and mulch back here. The paint's gonna get scratched. That's just the way it is. Corner welds are nice. Welds in the front, nice. Happy with the welds there. Going in the back. Nice, pretty happy with that. I wanna get out of the trailer. I have this nice step right here. That step may not look like much, but it's a really nice feature for getting in and out of the trailer. So I do believe they call this a low side dump trailer. And the height from the ground to the top of this rail is about 51 and a half inches. But what's nice, they have these slots built into the tarp bracket and also into the back right here. So if you want to put a 2x10 or 2x12 in the back here, you can gain an additional, you know, 10 or 12 inches of height on the sides there. You know, I'd, I'd imagine that'd be great for doing big loads of mulch or wood chips. Definitely not for topsoil or uh, gravel. Again, be careful about your weights. Let's talk a little bit about lighting, all LED lighting, little amber light right here, which that's nice. I can see that in my mirrors. This is a really important light to me. I like that they have these fender lights in here, which this trailer is wide. It's a bit wider than the truck. It's probably like a foot wider than the truck. And I, I always like to have my fenders at the widest part marked out. This is really great for going down the road for oncoming cars so they can see that, hey, this guy's sticking out. I need to make sure I give him enough room going down the road. I believe it's amber in the front. I think it's amber in the rear too. In the back right here, I love this tower in the back. I like that the lights are high up off the ground so people can see these. You know, commonly on dump trailers, you see the taillights tucked in the back here and they're very difficult to see. Well, clearly my license plate's back there, which that's fine because that's protected and the cops can't see that as easily. But as for the brake and turn lights, I love that they're up high. It, it just makes it easy for traffic behind me to see them. And I like that they're pretty well protected back here. You also have a little LED red marker light in the back, which again, you know, when I'm looking at the back of this trailer at night, I can actually see this light because it sticks out maybe like an eighth of an inch. So that's just great for, you know, backing up this trailer to the house at night and you can just easily identify where the end of your trailer is. All right, so early on in this video, I mentioned that this dump door opens in two ways. One, it opens in a barn door style way in which it swings out wide open. And two, it opens like a dump door. So if you want to spread gravel or topsoil or dirt or something like that, and you just kind of want to flake it out and drive forward, which really hard to do with a dump trailer, but it can be done um, easier with gravel than it is with topsoil because gravel, you know, kind of comes out consistently as where topsoil, especially when it's wet, it'll kind of come out in clumps. Um, but anyway, back to how this door operates. Pretty simple, just a locking handle like that. And these doors swing out and they go out to the side of the trailer and how they stay on the side of the trailer, um, there's this little bracket right here with a little hole and there's another bracket on the side with the pin. I'll actually take that pin out. This is what the pin looks like. So you swing this out to the side, drop the pin in here and that will just keep those doors open to the side. I do it right now, but they'd hit the, uh, the edge of my garage right now. And don't want to damage the garage. So they're, I mean, it, it's pretty effortless to swing these open. I do like that they have grease fittings on the hinges. So, you know, I think this trailer is going to last a very long time, especially if well taken care of. When I close this latch, it feels snug. Everything feels tight. So that's really nice. Almost effortless to open this up and dump everything out. Now let's talk about the second way this door operates. It operates like a dump truck in that it hinges from the top up here. 
All right, so here's the latch I was referring to that locks in this dump gate. So how this works, first off, there's a pin right here. So what you wanna do, lift it open like that, and you can put this pin back here, or put it back in the handle temporarily so you don't lose it. And now, this thing literally will hinge open. It's actually hitting a chain on the other side, which I, you know, I haven't adjusted the chains yet because I haven't really needed to, uh, well, I haven't had a chance to spread anything yet, but here's how these chains work. Let me loosen up the one on the other side first. All right, so again, nice dump door. And if you want this to open up all the way, you can take these chains out of the bracket right here and this will just open up all the way. So if you want to spread gravel or something like that, you can take these chains and you can shorten them up. Of course, it's a good idea to test this out, you know, test out how much you want it to open before you put material in the back here in case there's anything pressed up against tailgate. So you adjust these chains to where you want them, do this on both sides, and now when you dump up the trailer, these chains will prevent the gate from opening any further than how short the chain is. So that's just a really nice feature right there. And when you open this handle up, there's a bar that goes through this piece of uh, square tubing here and this bar just goes all the way to the other side. So when you close this side, there's actually a latch on the other side that will lock at the same time. Really nice feature. And also something else I noticed, there are hooks back here if you wanna wrap some rope or something back here to help you with tying down a tarp. All right, stick with me, I'm almost done with this review. So let's lift this up all the way. Well, actually I can't lift it up all the way because it'll make contact with the garage if I do, but let's lift this up and take a look at the underside of this. And you know what I actually just figured out what this slot is for. I guess it's for really rainy days. You can actually take this cable, put the dump controller through this little slot right here and then close the lid to kind of protect your sensitive pump and battery in there. So you know, that's actually a nice feature. All right, now let's get a little nitpicky. So one thing I want you to be careful of when you're looking at Griffin trailers is make sure you lift it up and inspect the welds for these ribs. Look at these welds. Do they seem like they're welded hot enough? Do they seem like they're of decent quality? When I went to Tool Shed of America, they had five of these trailers on the lot. And I looked at all of them, and I looked for the one that had the best welds. The first one I looked at, the one close to the road, when I lifted up the dump body, a lot of these welds were just terrible. So before you purchase one of these trailers, just make sure you go over the welds and make sure they look adequate. For this one, all the welds look pretty good. Pretty happy with all these welds. Um, it has dual cylinder, like I mentioned earlier. I like that there are grease fittings. There's grease fittings up top and on the bottom. And there's also grease fittings for these hinges, which they are up in here, which you can't see. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. There's three hinges, which I actually like that. There's a center hinge there. I feel like on most dump trailers, you only have a hinge there and a hinge there. So, you know, the dumping action, all the weight that's in the trailer is spread out between three hinges and two cylinders, which I really like, as opposed to, you know, maybe two hinges and one cylinder in the center, so I like that. Also, something else I like is when the cylinder extends up, a lot of pressure is on this ram down here, and I like that they have bracing that goes from where this cylinder hinges all the way to the frame rail. What I dislike is I, I feel like they could have improved on the craftsmanship of this a little bit, like if you look at this cross member, you see how it's kind of off a little bit. Like this one's straight, but the one in between this one and the cylinder is just off a little bit. I feel like probably what happened is they cut probably a bunch of these in the factory and perhaps they cut them just a little bit too big. So as opposed to going back to the, uh, I don't know, however they cut these, the cutoff wheel or whatever, and just making this a little bit smaller so it'll go straight, they figure, you know what, we got to get this thing done. So they just slap it in there and weld it on, which, you know, it serves its purpose, but you know, just the, the craftsmanship could be a little bit better. 
Again, that's why I say this is a good value trailer. It's not the highest quality, but definitely a good value. And it's not just this trailer, it's every trailer that I looked at on the lot had this same thing going on. So it's just a manufacturing issue. There are these little flanges right here, so when the trailer comes back down, this just helps to make sure that it gets seated down properly. By the way, I do have this trailer halfway chalked up. I have a, a piece of firewood in the back and another piece of firewood there. There is a prop, which this is nice. You know, obviously you hold this up and then lower the trailer back down on it. So um, the, the instructions do say that when you come under here to grease and maintain components, you don't want to rely just on that um, that prop. You also want to have some cribbing underneath there. That That's really not adequate, but you know, just for video's sake. Again, here's a look at the 6,000 pound axles, which they have a really nice warranty on them. Uh, well, not sure the axles themselves, but the springs have a five year warranty. Uh, the wiring is all hidden in the frame rail, which is kind of bittersweet to me. I like that it's hidden, but at the end of the day, I'd almost prefer that they kept it on the outside of the frame rail. Here's what I dislike. Okay, so you have a hole right here for the wiring, that's fine. You have a hole here. This is a pretty big hole. You have a hole right here. I like that when they made these holes, they put a little bit of plate over that hole just to, you know, kind of help strengthen up the member. But what drives me nuts is they've created an intrusion spot for water and salt and stuff like that. And this frame rail too. They created a spot. You can see the rust forming down there for water and salt. If you run this in the salt, which I'm never going to run this in the salt, they created a spot for all this to get in the frame take the camera underneath here and I've actually looked at this quite thoroughly there are no drainage holes anywhere on any of these frame rails so if you do decide to buy one of these trailers you're gonna want to drill drainage holes in your hydraulic box and you're gonna want to drill drainage holes in your frame members you know I think it's kind of silly that I have to do that myself but I don't know. Big hole right here. No spot for water to drain out. So, yeah, you're going to have to drill some holes if you want your trailer to last. Here's me just being a little bit more nitpicky. So, the main rail that goes up to the trailer hitch, the way they do this, they actually notch this and they bend this. So, it's one piece on the outside, but on the inside, it's all notched. And you can actually see the little notch right there. I just wish, you know, they welded that up a little bit better. It's a little sloppy on the underside, but you know, it's adequate. You know, again, right here, you have a little opening. It, it, it would have took, an, you know, another couple seconds to fill that in with weld just to protect that a bit better. Well, it's been a long review. Hopefully it's been very thorough and hopefully it's helped a lot of you people out there in deciding whether this trailer is right for you. I think the overwhelming theme of this trailer is it's a good value trailer really is you're really getting a lot for six thousand dollars here you know the twin rams the led lighting kit i love the design and engineering of the tarp welds if you're looking at these trailers when you're about to buy it on the lot before you hand the guy the money just inspect the welds inspect the craftsmanship because you got to watch the first one i i saw just especially the welds underneath the bed you know they, they really weren't cutting it for me on this one they're they're adequate they're pretty good um, I've said it probably five times now, but on all these frame rails, you know, there's no spot for water to drain. So, you know, you're going to have to drill some holes if you want your trailer to last, which, you know, no big deal. Um, the trailer itself, I think, comes with a one-year warranty, as mentioned earlier on in this video, against, uh, you know, defects in craftsmanship. And some closing, closing thoughts here. One reason I feel so confident about purchasing a trailer like this is these trailers really don't lose their value that much. Before deciding on purchasing a new one, I was actually looking at the same model used and somebody was asking, you know, $5,500 for a trailer that was a year old and pretty beat up, same exact model trailer. So, you know, trailers, dump trailers, horse trailers, tractors, they really don't lose their value that much. You know, I can have this trailer for five years and take really good care of it. You know, I'm planning to wax the outside of this thing, really try and maintain the finish of this trailer. You know, inside the dump bed, you know, it's, it's gonna get scratched up. I, I totally expect that, but 
you know, if you take care of something and make it look nice and shiny, you know, five years down the road, if I want to sell this, I'm, I'm pretty certain I could get, you know, five or $5,500 or well, 5,000 or $5,500. Of course, again, you know, it's a matter of, you know, you got to find the right buyer, but, but yeah, I'm really confident in this purchase and I can't wait to start using it. But you know, before I start using this for brush, I think that electric Harbor Freight chainsaw just isn't going to cut it for this property. I'm going to have to buy a steel chainsaw.